From out of the living halls of faith, halls of fame of faith, come these old immortal words. I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. I like these words. They're big words. Words that ring with sterling strength in them. They have a robust masculinity that grips my heart. They are not words of a weakling. They have absolutely no savor of softness or moral flabbiness. They are not cheap words. They have absolutely high-priced words. A high-priced tag is attached to these words. These words are costly. They are baptized with the baptism of tragedy. They are literally soaked in blood and tears. This man, Jephthah, has made a vow. The hours upon him in which it is his duty to make good his vow. His vow involves far more, far more than he ever expected. But the fact does not cause him to do to be untrue. He gives uh, his promise. His payday has come and it's time to make good. His, proper, his promise involves an immeasurable sacrifice. To keep it is to put out every star in his sky. It's to pluck up every flower out of his garden. He knows the price is big, but he will not refuse to pray it. He knows his promise is hard, but he will keep it. He said, I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. Jephthah has had many hard things said about him. He has been wrong since the day that he was born. I do not think justice has been done to his memory. Frankly, I think he is one of the most heroic characters of the Old Testament and Old Testament history. The Apostle Paul includes him in the Heroes Hall of Fame of Hebrews chapter 11. And it is true that we in our modern ideas do not understand this, but Understand, Jephthah lived in the dawn of human history. He lived when the light was dim, and yet the light that he had, he was true to. He was far more true to his light than many of us are today. There's something about him. He has a rugged fidelity and faithfulness that causes him to rise up and look us straight in the eye and says, If I did it, you can do it. I think Jephthah has been greatly wrong. He's never had a fair chance. He was wrong right from his very birth. He is the son of a father who did not keep his marriage vows. He was unfaithful to his marriage vows. Jephthah was a child of shame. His father had chosen to sacrifice upon the altar of selfishness. His father had had his fling. He had sown his wild oats, and of necessity there was a harvest. His father suffered, but more than his father, Jephthah suffered also. Dad's this father's day, grandpa's this father's day, we need to be reminded again and again that no man ever sins alone. No man ever walks from the path of virtue without walking with bruised and bleeding feet and sufferings. But all together, not only does he suffer, but our children suffer. Hello. Amen. Our families suffer. And it meant suffering for this baby boy. Not only did Jephthah have a part of his life tragedy of an unclean father, but he had an unclean mother as well. Jephthah's mother was one of those unfortunate souls more sinned, uh, that, that sinned more than was sinned against. She was not an unfortunate person. She did not take false steps with the man she loved, but she was a professional outcast. She was a woman who made her business to sell her body upon the counters of iniquity. She is one of those who, Proverbs 7, 24 through 27 states, Hearken unto me, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, nor go up, and go not astray in her path. For she has cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men has she slain. 
Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. So Jephthah had little chance of making good in his life. He was a fragment of a home that never was. He had no father that dared to own him. The first eyes he looked into were the eyes of an unclean woman. The first lips that kissed him were the lips of a woman that was soiled and stained by sinful living. Poor little baby, poor little orphan, poor little outcast. How much he missed. We all have precious memories. I don't know about you, but I've got precious memories that are steeped with tender love. I know, I, I can recall scenes of my childhood. I, I can recall growing up in, in the suburbs of Denver, Colorado. I recall running up and down the hills of that uh, uh, community. I have fond recollections of picking apples from the orchard and, and running through the meadow and running through the tangled wildwoods. I love every spot. We have our favorite haunts there. But the secret of the fascination of my childhood is, that, is this, uh, that I saw it all with an understanding that there was love behind my life. I had a father and a mother who knew God. I have that one core that held me tight during my childhood years, and it was a strength, and it was the faith of mom and dad. But Jephthah missed all this. His father was unfaithful. His mother was an unclean woman. There were no tender and holy associations for Jephthah in his early childhood. There were no fond memories to stir him up to a better life. There were no whispers about love in his ears. There were no fond recollections to lay hold on him like angels' hands tenderly taking him and keeping him from the city of destruction. He was a child of sin. He was a child of darkness and of the night. He never had the inspiration of a good mother to hold his life. He never had the sweet, uplifting voice of a father's prayer ringing in his ear. He never had a father or a mother to tuck him in at night and kneel down beside his bedside and pray with him and read him Old Testament stories of heroes of faith gone by. Not only was Jephthah wrong in what he missed as a child, he was equally wrong about what he suffered. Early he was branded with the names of shame that were not his own, his own fault. I know of no place where society has been any harder than on innocent children. Jephthah was one of those innocent childs. We forget that every child comes into this world with the kiss of a holy father upon its soul, and its soul is clean and pure. We forget that the child is not responsible for the circumstances of his birth, and he is not to be blamed for how he came into the world. But Jephthah was blamed. He was called ugly names. Before he was even old enough to understand their meaning, he was forbidden to uh, go to the father's house. He was forbidden to walk in among his brothers and sisters, his half-brothers and sisters. He was not allowed to play with them. They thrust him out. Perhaps a jealous and a bitter stepmother would not allow him near her home. And I can see him as he watches his half-brothers and half-sisters playing around that big yard in that big house. And he was hungry for a playmate, but he was excluded from the family. And he was called dirty names, ugly names. And he was excluded from their fellowship. And bitter tears, no doubt, raced down his cheeks with disappointment. And the gates to that home are closed to him. But by and by, Jephthah becomes a young man, and his parental estate is to be divided, and, and Jephthah is disinherited. Uh, his brothers and sisters says, you're not going to have any part of our inheritance. You're the son of a strange woman. We cast you out. You have no right to anything that was our dad's. And so the parental establishment or the estate was divided. 
Jephthah was disinherited. He is driven away from his home and from his parents. And so he's driven away with no memory. Nobody believes in him. Everybody expects Jephthah to go wrong. Every time somebody looks at him, they think this guy's never going to make it. He's going to go wrong. No doubt they whispered, oh yeah, I know his dad. His dad was a, a, a man that was selfish and self-centered and his father fully disowned him. I also know his mother. She died in the gutter. You can't expect anything of Jephthah. And it's not difficult to go down when everybody believes you're going to go down. Hello? <clears throat> One of life's treasures is to have somebody believe in you. One of life's treasures is to have somebody that says you can make it. That is a tremendous help. Uh, speak great things to your children. Talk great things to your children. Build your children up. Tell them they're going to be great and do great things for God. Expect great things from your children. As long as they feel that somebody believes in them and counts in them, uh, they can have an anchor for their heart and in their and in their lives. Uh, I read the other day of a little boy. He, he was sent out to get change for a stranger, and the man trusted him, gave him some money. He said, go give me some change, young man. And while the young boy was running to the grocery store, on his way back, he was hit by an automobile and, and crushed. And, and lying in the street there, as they gathered around him, he said to a man standing by, would you give this change to the man that gave me this uh, $5? He believes in me, and he trusted me. But he never did make it back to the man. But as long as you feel that you can have somebody, that somebody trusts you and believes in you, you can make it. Amen. 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 But here is Jephthah, exiled, robbed, persecuted, mistrusted, charred, ugly by ugly names. Uh, uh, nothing in his life to build a life upon. Nothing to, to have an anchor for him. And what was the result of this land? man? He said, well, I refuse to surrender. If nobody else believes in me, I will believe in myself. Since nobody else will help me, I will help myself. If I am robbed of my inheritance, I will build my own inheritance. And so he set himself to work and he didn't spend his time hunting up neighbors and tell them about his misfortunes. He did not put time into boasting of what he could have done if only his half-brothers had been uh, courteous and kind and generous with him. No, he didn't spend his time with soft stories and telling this of his misfortune. But he went to work and he began to build his life. And little by little, he overcame and became the man that God intended yes, him to be. One day, a runner came into his field and said, Jephthah, you've got a visitor, a committee from Israel that's come down to, to see you. And he said, who are they? And they told him, it's a company of elder, a committee of elders from Israel. And Jephthah is astonished, and he go on, puts the work aside, and filled with wonder, he makes his way back home, and, and with the problem unsolved of his, in his mind, he greets his guest, and the elders greet him like a lost, long, long lost son. Oh, Jephthah, you're doing so well for yourself. Look at what all you've attained, and, and Jephthah, we're so happy for you, and the prosperity that has come your way, and, and we, we want you to know, Jeff, that we always believed in you. But he replied, why did you cast me out? <clears throat> they said, well, he said, finally, why are you really here? And they tell him the story. Israel is being besieged by the Ammonites. We want you to come and become our commander-in-chief, the commander of our armies. He 